last split was a lot of inheriting a team. I was able to come in as a head coach, which is really rare, and they had like a very clear way of doing things, right? So I didn't want to change too much too fast. After going through the off season, having a lot more agency in building my own coaching staff, there's definitely a bigger sense of ownership in terms of like what Dodo and I and Steve have built. With having more say in the way the coaching staff is put together, I also have a lot more responsibility for the results. So there's gonna be more pressure with the changes that we made in the off season and that's very exciting when we win and it's gonna hurt a lot if we lose. So better make sure that we win. Welcome to Summoner's Rift. I mean, do you think this will be okay for you? Or, like the, we're not going to be moving around that much. Yeah, I guess it's fine. I guess so. Yeah. We're still here. Yeah, I'll be used to the setup. Oh, it was a classic bacon egg sausage. Oh, okay. Going into the offseason, we knew Core and Tactical were just total locks because not only were they great players, they were also still under contract from previous years. Jensen was a free agent, so he was a very high priority to resign. And then we had an open book in the top lane and jungle because we had two upcoming free agents there, and there was also a lot of people that were going to be hitting the market. It's very important during an offseason that you're prepared for every possibility. TL are attempting to essentially get the best player in every single role, right? Like they are just like building this this in incredible team. Now they have Alfari. Santorum was one of the best, if not the best jungler throughout all of LCS last year. Such big pickups for Team Liquid. And we're talking about like, you know, perfecting perfecting the squad. Yeah. And I'm already juiced for our international well, victories. Even though we did have a lot of backup plans, we were able to get just the top choice in both the top lane and jungle position. Hey everyone, the LCS is back. We have our first LCS lock-in, a three-week tournament to kick off the 2021 LCS season. This is gonna be incredibly exciting. I'm actually super, super excited for the start of the season for the lock-in tournament. I think it's gonna be a pretty cool way to kick things off. I'm stoked. There's like so many new components to it. It's new format, new look, uh, you know, new players. Thank you, Kitty. This is her. Yeah. I was really scared. Maybe I'm crazy, but... Play the game as we know it, have confidence, have fun, and Armeo specifically, like, feel completely free to call off plays if, if you feel like something is right for you. You can see the champions running out onto the rift right now. We are ready to go. Hell yeah, ready to go. When Alfari got here, he started scrimming the next day on Wednesday and Thursday before playing lock-in. One day, we will all be in the same room. <laughs> and then Santorin arrived on the Saturday, and we still used our mayo for Sunday's games because it would have been way too fast of a turnaround for Santorin to make it in. And also, our mayo really deserved um, from his participation and quality of play and practice to get some reps against LCS teams. So that was kind of the overall picture of how we tried to make it work. In the first game here with TL's fully completed roster, they crush TSM in lock-in. And Team Liquid showing up and showing that they're just a cut above. I want to give a shout out to Santorin. He is always at the right place at the right time. A lot of people have TL as the best team right now. This squad works together as a unit. Team Liquid is incredibly talented. There is no clear one player who's so much better than the rest anymore. Okay. <laughs> Like, it's fine, but it's also, like, really not fine. It's fine? Hey, John, so how is uh, Kha'Zix vs. Graves? Uh, it's actually fine for me, but, like, I get Dirk, I get it's just free. Okay, what are the two best players in the world? What are the two best players in the world play? Graves, obviously. That's so are you funny. kidding me? <laughs> like, it's good, but it's also, like, not good at the same time. 
I always like uh, hitting enemies as well next to us. It's, uh, and again. Oh, no, it's just too much fun. I, I just like fighting too much. I think social work. Mm -hmm. You're a social worker. I'm a, I'm a social media guy. Literally. <sighs> to be honest, uh, all these guys are, are capable of carrying games and carrying series. I think as a result, Team Liquid's going to be terrifying. A minute to go until game time. I want to know where the three of you are throwing your weight when it comes to predictions. Uh, Mark, I don't have much hope for an EG prediction here, but what do you got for me? No, I'm not. I don't have much. I'm going <laughs> TL3-0 as well, like okay. you said. I, I, I bring a certain kind of energy, <laughs> and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's negative. Yeah. Impact had some really, really insightful things to say. He is looking forward to flashing his Team Liquid logo over the Nexus as they find victory. <laughs> so I'm super excited to get into this one. and uh, there is going to be a delay before we get into game, but fingers crossed it's not going to be too much longer. So that gives us time to talk. Um, <laughs> I don't know what all y'all want to talk about now. Finally, Pastry! We've been team. waiting for years! Team Liquid is going to overpower in the jungle. Like, Spence Garrett's fighting for his life. Oh. Impact going to have to hop away. Very much vulnerable here. Another great hook for Core, and that's going to be a kill for him. Well deserved. Good chocolate up there as well. Is that a solo kill? Jensen, you're disgusting. So Team Liquid do actually want to invest in keeping this up. There so in there with a shockwave, what an engage by Team Liquid with the counter engage is good. But Igno hits three as Fence Garen's gonna run in there, berserking into the back line as Tactical's gonna shoot him down. It's just run it straight at him if all else fails. Base three, TL right down the middle for game number one. The overall energy of the team was very steady, I would say and pretty focused. And I think that's something that is gonna be hopefully an attribute of this team. Okay, so everyone is like really good individually, right? Which was to be expected. But the main surprise for me was that everyone's also really easy to work with and talk with. Communication is really easy. I feel like everyone is willing to sacrifice if they need to. So yeah, I'm really grateful for that. We had some really long pauses in our EG series. These guys have been through long pauses before. They're used to just being able to relax and then refocus once the game starts. Oh, he's bad. The flash is gonna be Corpus and Heron's gonna go under the tower in first blood. It is indeed Santorin gonna nab it. Core JJ's picked up a fence going with the Ignite. Impact finds one only with the ulti and that's not enough. Oh. The hooks continue to rain down. Dazuke gonna get locked up as well and Team Liquid are gonna win it all. Three kills and the Baron. Tackle is bye bye. Pass. That's another, that's the last, and that's the Bud Light Aces. Team Liquid just collect everything. Team Liquid on the macro game continuing to impress. Alfari about to transform. He does get rooted though as Jensen grabs the double kill. Here comes the Realm of Good interrupt there by Jensen. They're gonna turn it back around. Azuke gonna go to sleep. The Lilia Burn is on him and he will fall down. Action packed space three time. Yeah, no, nothing. In fact, just. Oh, so good! Oh my god, so good! Holy shit! Holy shit, guys! Outplayed so hard. Alfari is coming! Since Garen is just committed to the cause and he's dead now, Jensen goes ledge for <laughs> 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 Literally, that is down. Impact with a nice kill there. Oh, so good. Impact gonna get the logo flashed on there as Alfari gonna get the final kill. Surely Boulder Toss is it, the Bud Light Ace. To finish it off, it's the sweep for Team Liquid Kobe. They're going to the finals 3 0 over Evil Geniuses. Nice job, guys. Nice job. GG. Yeah, I was like, when I'm using the DL Chase at Pixel Bush at five minutes, suddenly the game just explodes. You freeze for two seconds as you're clicking the magic for me. So I just see your screen freeze and it's like, yeah, I'm not going to get into the air. Yeah. Oh, hey Barney, you're going to call in from your apartment? Yeah, I'm going to do it. Okay, cool. Sounds good. Yeah.
Okay, cold. Um, I, I want to think about how to deal with C9 since it's such a short journey. It's a pretty stressful day. So. Versus C9, there was a really short turnaround time. It's very rare that you're playing best of fives on back-to-back -back days. So the prep time was pretty low when you compare it to what else we're able to do when normally we're able to kind of prep throughout the entire week. We're responding to what C9 drafted on Friday and we're responding to what we learned from our EG draft on Saturday. But confidence wise, like we were pretty happy with what we found and I really liked our chances going into the C9 series. So mindset wise, I think we felt prepared considering the circumstances and that was what I was thinking. Welcome everybody, it is finally time. Either Team Liquid or Cloud9 is walking to the, away today with that victory. Are you ready for what I'm hoping is five games of non-stop action and insane kills and incredible outplays? This is it, boys. He wants to reset this wave, but even this feels a little bit dicey. Can he actually kill off Flavor? Oh my god! Oh, Alfari's right back in there and he bonks him upside the head. Yeah. This Camille, this by the way. I've double yeah, you get it, you get it. Alfari going in for the two-man counter-strike, now gonna get stunned up himself as the CC's down to Vulcan before he's able to get the Haymaker, and now it's a Team Liquid fight, baby! Cloud9's on the run, but how much further are their legs gonna take him? Can you ult him? Look, I should have ulted. We got it, we got it, we got it. Nice. I'm, I'm out, Boris. I'm gonna push him. Yeah. This guy's looking for me, man. I have to flash. Yeah. I, I, I can look. This guy ulted in, he ulted in. Can I get him No flash, has gone, has gone. That's okay. Nice shot, nice nice shot. Nice yeah. Oh my god, thank you, Sven. Cloud9 jumping right back in there with Fudge and Vulcan together. As the Galley Walty comes up, comes down, Fudge is out of the picture, Sven's running away. Team Liquid wants to end game one real fast, Azale. Vulcan drops next, Jensen takes the kill. And with a 2v5 on the map, Team Liquid is showing Cloud9 how it's done here in the final has really handled what Cloud9 wanted to do masterfully. They shut down perks. He really got nothing going with the LeBlanc. They found the picks uh, with this Blitzcrank. And Team Liquid will win the second game in a row here. They will take this one to match point and demand a reverse sweep from Cloud9 as the Nexus falls and TL takes game two. TL had all the answers. It's a tough one for C9 because I don't even disagree with a lot of the composition decisions that they made here. Team Liquid were able to outplay it on all fronts this time around. From Alfari and Core JJ, it's C9 not going down without a fight. It's C9 going for the win, and it's C9 taking game three. I try not to watch off of their screens because I can't actually see them but I can always hear core through the door. I'll like hear a fight's happening and I just can't stop myself from looking over. And like, sometimes it's good and I feel great. And then I'm just kind of not quiet about it and just like waiting for it on the stream. And then sometimes it's bad. And then you have that, like, that feeling in the pit of your stomach. Ladies and gentlemen, you wanted a final. We got ourselves a final. C9's onto the Nexus. C9's gonna take the win and we are going to game number five. Oh my God, I can't believe it. Game five after the start. From this series. They are hovering top. They are, they are, they're looking top. They're top. Can we move up? We can come up. I'm sorry, Maya. We're here. The deer is here and Perks is running away. Liquid turn it back around. Got Torrance in hot pursuit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Oh, oh, my God. And now they're pushing up onto the tier two. Now Core JJ is coming in. Now they got the follow up. Perks with the stasis trying to stay alive, but it just gives them time to focus on this van instead. I did. Kaisa, really? no, no flash. No flash. Team Liquid. The best team in North America still, and the winners of your first ever LCS lock-in. Nice, nice.
Trophies here. This is a giant trophy. Oh. Holy shit. It's like an OCS trophy. How should they do it? actually bigger. Whoa, so. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually better than the OCS trophy. It is, a, it, it is actually better than the OCS trophy. Oh. Do you guys want to do it? No, I don't want to. I'm going to stay in the same. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Holy shit. This has more cool than my MVP trophy. Is this your first tiger, Bunny? Yeah, this is the first time I come oh, to this. Oh, it's... But I don't know, it's a tight it. top because it's not like a real split. Oh, actually, it was big, big drivers. <laughs> that doesn't feel like a real tight top, but... It's like a Casper car. Yeah. Casper <laughs> car demarcation. It's like big drivers. Yeah, I'm, I'm still told Yeah, now. Uh, now world's qualifications. Yes, yeah. I'm still told but our, uh, our lock in I mean, like, I feel like I'm doing nothing in, except for the Siri games. But, like, okay. I'm just doing, I'm like, <laughs> I'm literally playing Farm Simulator, man. Okay, you want to hold this, Barney? <laughs> <laughs> That's so heavy for me. It's gonna make me sore again. Yeah, it's gonna make me sore. Oh, shit. It's been really nice so far. Obviously, it's like a honeymoon phase, which I'm a bit aware of, but. Yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to keep playing on stage. I wanted to win the tournament, but that wasn't like a priority. The goal was kind of just get used to everyone, get used to, you know, the office, the organization. The days have just been blurring into each other with how we've been practicing and all the stage games and just getting used to, you know, life here a little bit in LA. Yeah, it's been going really well and yeah, this is a pretty nice bonus. Honestly, right now I feel really good. I don't think we should read too much into it, like, oh yeah, we're definitely gonna win NA for sure. But I do think it's a nice step. Like, we came into this tournament and we have been steadily improving throughout the series, right? We did best of fives, we got pushed to game five, um, we avoided the reverse sweep. So there's like a lot of satisfaction in the moment. And now it's just gonna be about not having a letdown before the regular season starts. Because it feels great in the moment, but actually the season starts on Friday. So we're gonna have to reset a little bit in the next week.